So today we're going to be having a look at sweep handle position. So where you put your hands on the handle, uh, what you do with the hands during the stroke, and, um, and just basically a couple of the mistakes that people tend to make uh, when, when rowing along. So the first thing you want to remember with handle grip is to keep the fingers nice and nice and relaxed. You don't want to be gripping too tight. You grip tightly with the, with the hands. You end up transferring that all the way up into the shoulders. It's a real waste of energy and it's going to make it a lot harder to do those, those fine tapping out movements and have any finesse when you're doing, doing this part of the stroke. So a couple of basics. The inside hand does the feathering. Uh, the outside hand does the levering. So the catch you pull through with the outside hand more than the inside hand. As you sort of come through the stroke, they both turn on and you end up with the stroke. But it's important to remember not to drop the, drop the wrists at the finish, especially the outside hand. Um, you really want to be drawing through, strong finish position and tapping out. If you go and drop the wrist at the finish, you sort of end up coming through, dropping the wrists. You sort of drop the shoulders as well so you want to draw up tap down so tapping down typically we talk about tapping down with the outside hand it's just because the inside hand is doing the feathering so coming through tapping down then feathering you let it spin inside the hand inside the outside hand so inside hand feather and come forward and so the other other common thing that uh, we see or get asked about a bit is where to position the handle so what to do with the hands, how to position them on the blade. So we'll start with the outside hand. So on the out, with the outside hand, you want to be holding onto the blade, but you want to be pivoting. So you can sort of see how, here how my hand pivots. You want to keep the hand basically facing parallel with the boat, um, perpendicular um, to the 90 degrees. So when you come forward, you sort of, it sort of keeps, stays in the same plane. So. One of the ways that I've heard described, uh, Lyle McCarthy says, you know, imagine you've got a nail driven through your middle knuckle, and so it pivots on that nail as you're rowing along. And so at the finish, it means that you're holding on a little bit more with the inside fingers. The outside fingers aren't doing as much. You don't want to be like locked onto the blade. So if I lock on with all my fingers, draw it through to the finish, I have to, it sort of brings my whole body around. What you really want to be doing is keeping nice and strong with the elbow, pivoting from the wrist, and just allowing a little bit of relaxation with the outside two knuckles. And at the catch, again, the relaxation with the outside fingers. So wrapping around with the inside fingers, outside fingers a little bit loose. And you could even have the outside finger off at the catch, just right at that catch angle. But as you come through, all the fingers are on. And then at the finish, Again, the fingers are a little bit looser because you don't want it to be pulling you around too much like that. So you just let them come a little bit loose at the finish. Uh, the inside hand, uh, there's a few different uh, rules of thumb that people use for this. So sometimes it's two, two fist widths. So one, two, and then that's where the inside hand goes. I've heard other people say shoulder width apart, but that's not going to be possible. Uh, for people with really broad shoulders, you'd end up having having your hands about, you know, on this, off the grip completely. Um, so generally what I recommend is just having the hands on either side of the grip. So, um, you know, outside hand right at the edge, not off the edge. You don't want to be having your hands off the edge like this. You want to be on the edge, nice and strong. And then the inside hand just before, just before the turn up of this, this croaker handle, or if you have a choice, yeah, the two fist width is pretty good. And so you can have your hand pretty comfortably anywhere from, from say here, all the way to about here. That's quite natural. So if you're rowing along like that naturally, not too bad. If you have your hands all the way over here, you lose a lot of control with the blade. So it's gonna be a lot harder for you to control that blade movement. Uh, it's a lot easier when it's more stable like this. But if you have your hand down the shaft, so imagine if you're rowing like this, you end up having to having to twist around your rigger quite a lot and you don't get very good power from this inside hand because it's drawing through on a really, really, um, you're essentially shortening the lever that you have available. Here is maximum lever, here is like minimum lever for the inside hand and that's why 
The outside hand goes on the end, get maximum leverage. The inside hand, you know, compared to the whole blade, it's relatively close to the end, even having it here, so good leverage. But you don't want to be cramping yourself up too much. So people with wider shoulders, you know, if I if I do that, like it sort of just cramps you up a lot. So it's a bit part relaxation, part working out where the natural position for you to put the hand is, but try and avoid the extremes, try to stay on the grips, try not to end up down here, try not to end up way up here unless you you know well practiced at it and maybe some more proficient crews might go up here to get a little bit more leverage and a little bit more length at the catch but in general just keep your inside hand about two fist width apart not too far up the grip and definitely not onto the flared portion of the handle where it where it gets larger onto the oar for example so if we have a look at the finish position from the side you want to make sure that you have a nice neutral position with your wrists when the blade's square in the water especially, so when you've got the power on, you don't have your wrist cocked up like this. Yes, it'll make it easier when you go to the feather. If you drop your wrist, they'll end up flat, but it's really hard to apply power through this direction because you imagine a line going through. You want the line to be going straight through from the handle all the way through to the shoulder. Nice and relaxed. And so again, coming through, you're drawing through all the way to the finish. You've got like a nice pivot in your outside hand, inside hand's ready to tap down. And when you tap down, you want to think about, uh, think about rolling it out in the inside hand. So very similar to what we do with sculling. So, you know, rolling it out, rolling it, rolling it out a little bit. You want to avoid using the feathering with a huge drop of the wrist. So if I keep my wrist, so this is my, my powerful position during the drive phase. If I use just a wrist drop to feather that blade, I have to come all the way to there. Like that's, that's too far and you see it's bringing down my shoulder. Side on. So it brings down my shoulder if I feather, feather like that. So what I really want to do is come through to the finish, tap down and feather with a little bit of roll Ideally, complete roll of the fingers out to the fingers. So, stability with the outside hand, push down, outside hand, feather with inside hand, and try and do it like a rolling motion. That way, keeping my wrist as flat as possible when I feather the oar means it's not going to drag my shoulders down, it's not going to drag my elbows down, it's going to mean, just like in sculling, you're nice and up on top of it before you come forward. So yeah, when it comes to the wrists cocked up like this, typically people do it more with their inside hand than their outside hand, and it's all about them not being able to roll it out in their hand. So when they get to the finish, they tap down, and their wrist comes into this neutral position. Good for the recovery, really bad for the drive because you just don't, can't apply the power successfully with your wrist like that. You can imagine trying to hang off a set of uh, uh, like a chin-up bar with a, with a cocked wrist like that, it would be nearly impossible. Um, you really need to have, during the drive phase especially, a really straight line of power from the handle all the way up the shoulder for both the inside and the outside hands. So yeah, I was saying how it's really important to have a, a nice relaxed grip, but we want to make sure it's not too loose. For example, when you get to the catch and square up, you want to make sure that you've got good control, you've got good connection, especially through these inside, inside fingers and thumb, especially on that blade, out to the catch, and you've got a good solid position to go. You don't want to be too loose, so feather, so here, go to the catch, go square up, like that's, it's too loose, like we're not on the blade, you need to have nice connection there with both the inside and the outside hand. Um, it's really important not to be too relaxed when you place that blade in the water, you need good control, you need good speed, and then when you come through to the finish, you know, it's the same deal. Tap down, keep good control of it, nice and relaxed in the hand, so you can have like a little, little gap here with the fingers, so if you roll it out, you end up with a bit of a gap. That's really easy to, and all, when you square up, all you have to do is just make a fist again, and it will square up. So go from that position to that position, and it means that you're not going to be having any flow on effects of um, when you tap down negatively affected. So don't want to be dropping the wrists like this, coming forward, 
like this so you have to put your hands a lot lower to get the same height off the water you need to tap down come forward and then when you square up yeah that works all right with the dropped wrist but it's not as effective as having tap down with the flat wrist feather flat wrist flat wrist come forward all you have to do let it pivot in the outside hand so this is just providing control the inside hand just rolls in so you go from the feather to the square just rolling in like that so feather square feather square feather square and it's going to take a while to get right and especially when you're starting off if you've got a real dropped wrist and that's how you control that blade just be happy with a half roll half drop so if you can do a little bit to bring your wrist back up with a roll so it's quite hard to roll it all the way out especially if you've got smaller hands it's hard to roll it all the way out in the fingers like that very difficult but if you just say go for a half half drop wrist half roll you still get a pretty good result compared to being dropped down like this so just having a look at the body position when you come come through at the finish so blade square comes comes through at the finish you don't want to be lifting up with the shoulders you don't want to be coming down with the shoulders you want to be sitting up nice and tall bringing the blade through tapping down so tapping down with the inside and feathering and coming forward tap feather forward and you want to have pivoting outside hand so outside hands moving in this plane you're holding on with the inside fingers at the catch as you come through all the fingers become on the blade and then again outside just let that blade swivel in the hand still holding tight with the inside um, the inside fingers and the outside fingers just relax a little bit to let the blade swivel without swiveling the wrist so coming through strong position not coming th not locked on going around and around and around so you want to be through swivel tap down inside hand feather so come through inside hand feather as you tap down come forward that's a roll in the fingers square it up place the blade and at the catch you got good control through these inside fingers outside fingers can come off even or what i'd just recommend is just loosening them allowing you to get that extra length without locking you so if we're going for a catch position and we have our fingers locked on we've got a real bend in the arm so trying to keep them nice and loose place fingers on tap down come forward and so sometimes it'd be difficult getting uh, athletes to understand what you need to do with what hands so uh, rowing with either you know inside arm only so really practicing on that feathering that feathering or outside arm only and remember no feathering with outside arm because it doesn't do the feathering so it's just practicing that pivot keeping control of the blade tapping out coming forward inside arm off it's just rowing square blades you're just controlling you're working on your body position your shoulders nice and relaxed, nice and strong, and not locked on, moving around like this. It's more in, power on, tap out, come forward, and again, just relaxing the outside fingers at the catch. So if you find your athletes are having a lot of trouble with dropping their wrists, um, not allowing the hand outside hand to pivot, things like that, it's probably a tension thing. They're probably just really tense tension travels all through the oar, makes it a lot harder for them to do everything. So one of the ways you can help uh, your athletes relax on the way forward is tap out. This is one of Anthony Edwards' exercises. Tap out, and he calls it playing the piano on the way forward. So tap down, playing the piano on the way forward, nice and relaxed, then you get the grip back on and continue on with your rowing stroke. Um, so that's especially useful for people who are gripping the oar, who aren't allowing it to roll out in their fingers so gripping the oar, dropping their wrists, mechanically working around their rigor um, without pivoting that outside hand. So just for them to relax, tap down on the way forward on the feather, just 
going to play the piano, relaxing their hand grip, square up, place, and that'll help them learn to relax their grip a little bit more. So it can be very useful to have your athletes um, practice on land, trying to just even with an all, a complete all like this, or you can just take the handle out, just have them learn to do what they need to with the inside hand, tap and roll out, outside hand for control, and pivoting, especially with the outside hand around, keeping the hands nice and straight. So it applies to the inside hand a little bit too, but generally it's more relaxed because it's done the feathering, it's rolled out, you've got a little bit of a gap there, so when you square up, you can square up, keep the wrist nice and flat, nice and close to that plane. So keep the wrist nice and flat when you square up, nice and relaxed, working in a strong position, not being too dogmatic with grouping, letting you grip, determine what your rowing stroke's gonna look like. Try and keep it nice and relaxed, not too relaxed. And allow for good connection with loose outside fingers at the catch. So yeah, most, most athletes don't have a very good understanding of what they need to be doing with their grip uh, in sweep boats and sculling, but um, it's especially important in sweep boats because it really affects how well you can work around your rigger and get good length in the boat. Uh, your grip affects a lot of that because of the asymmetrical nature of uh, the rowing stroke. So get them to practice on land, use either a grip or an oar, and when you hit the water it'll be a lot easier to grasp the concept um, of what you're trying to teach them with their rowing stroke.